In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create overcast lighting with Sky Atmosphere. Overcast Day creates a very distinctive atmospheric feel. A feeling of melancholy, somber, emotional, quiet and desolate. And lighting scatters in all directions. So you get no strong light and shadow and this introduces additional artistic and technical roadblock that you normally don't experience. Since standard sunny daytime lighting tends to be somewhat simple. You pick a time of day that creates interesting light and shadow such as morning or evening and you usually get pretty good results right away without much work. But with overcast lighting that's a bit different. There's more subtlety that is usually hard to achieve in game art. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to achieve overcast lighting with sky atmosphere. So this is the scene we're going to start from. And it's a simple landscape scene with not that many properties that have been changed. The landscape is one kilometer by one kilometer. And let me go through some of the actors and some of the properties that I did change. This way we're on the same page. If you go to window, environment light mixer, you'll get a window pop up with all the important lighting actors in one place. This way you don't have to select each actor and then go to details panel and then switch between each one. This is very useful and a quick way to see everything in one place. So I'm going to switch it over to normal from minimal so we get to see more of the properties and the settings. Directional light intensity has been changed to 3.14. This is a good default value to start from and then you change it from here. And nothing else has been changed under the direction light. Skylight intensity has been increased to 2 and default was 1. Under sky atmosphere nothing has been changed. And volumetric cloud. The only thing that I updated is I am using my own volumetric cloud material. And if you want to know how to create your own volumetric cloud material I do have a tutorial that I will link within the blog post and include the link inside the description below the video. So as you can see very minimal changes have been made. I also have a post process volume and the only things I've changed here is exposure, minimum and maximum brightness both have been set to 1 and the entire volume has been made universal. So I have unbound enabled. Alright now we can begin. The most important property that will give you overcast skies and overcast lighting is found inside sky atmosphere and it is my scattering scale. If you increase this to a larger value than the default, usually above 1, you will see that it will begin to give you overcast day lighting. The value that you push it to will depend on the time of day you had before. So if you had midday with very strong directional light intensity, you may have to increase it to something like 3, 4, maybe even 5. And you can see that not only do we get overcast lighting, but we also have our shadows on the ground diffused, softened. And I recommend that you jump into the map and playtest to get more accurate cast shadow diffusion. This way you can run around and see if you need to increase the my scattering scale. So in my case I'm going to push it to 1.8 and I may have to tweak it a little later. So my scattering scale alone will get you 80% there. Now of course we have many other properties we need to adjust and change. But this one is the key. The next property you want to change is also under sky atmosphere and it's my anisotropy. And what this will do is it will uniformly scatter light around the light source creating a halo effect. The default is 0.8 and you want to bring it down to 0. To see the effect you have to look at the direction light at the sun. And as you begin to decrease it, that halo effect around the sun will disappear. And on an overcast day you want to remove it completely. So go ahead and turn it down to zero. The sun disk you see in the sky is controlled by the direction light. So to remove that you want to select the direction light and change source angle. If you increase it, the sun disk will grow larger. And if you decrease it, it will become smaller. And you want to turn this to zero to completely remove it. And while you still have the directional light selected, you may want to tweak and adjust the intensity. Again, if you increase the directional light intensity, you may get to see more cast shadows. 
So you may need to increase my scattering scale if you do increase the directional light intensity. So we turned off the sun disk, but the directional light is still influencing and lighting the environment. And because we have my scattering scale turned up, the light is being scattered and diffused, but it's still affecting the atmosphere and lighting our environment. You can change the color of the light itself, but I like to use temperature. It gives more accurate representation of the light's color. So enable use temperature and you have temperature which can go from 0 to 10,000 K. And here's a very useful color temperature chart you can use. So if you bring it closer to 5,000 it will be more warm and this usually reflects a morning sky or an evening sky. But because we have diffuse lighting usually it's somewhat blue more on a gray color scale. So I'm gonna increase it to 8,000 and give a more cool, colder effect. Next, select the skylight, and you want to enable real-time capture. This will represent a more accurate capture of what the skylight is doing and how the other lighting actors are affecting the skylight, such as the sky atmosphere and the directional light. So you can see as soon as I did that, it's gonna begin real-time capture and our lighting situation changed. So it's important to enable so you get to see everything in real-time and you're not surprised when you jump into the map. And because of that, our lighting situation did change, so we need to maybe lower the intensity of the skylight to something like 1.5. Next, we need to go back to sky atmosphere and continue changing some of the properties there. This time, we're going to focus on Rayleigh scattering. There are two primary scattering methods in UE4 within the sky atmosphere, and that's Rayleigh scattering and my scattering. My scattering is how light interacts with larger particles in the atmosphere, such as dust, pollen, air pollution. And Rayleigh scattering is how light interacts with smaller particles, such as air molecules. So if you increase the Rayleigh scattering, you can see the effect taking place. And it's scattering the light, making it warmer. Now, of course, you can increase it and change the Rayleigh scattering color. So if I wanted to have more cooler than warmer Rayleigh scattering, then what I need to do is go across the color wheel on the opposite end. So the way scattering works is it's absorbing the color you are selecting. Thus, it's removing it from the atmosphere. So you can see I'm selecting the yellow color and we are adding blue into the atmosphere. So it's a little bit weird how it works, but just go opposite of the color you want. But when it comes to Rayleigh scattering, or overcast lighting, I usually turn this down to zero and leave it at that. Now that we've changed a few properties in the direction of light and the skylight, I'm gonna go back to my scattering scale and try a few more values. I'm gonna turn it down, maybe turn it up and just see what effect it has. Again, remember, this is the most important property that creates the overcast lighting situation. So you wanna push it further past one, maybe to two, three for a more diffused look. And of course, you can add a certain atmospheric scattering color by choosing the color you want. But I'm going to leave it at default white. Next, I'm going to change my absorption scale. This is how much of scattering is being absorbed. And it makes it darker. So in my case, I'm going to turn it down to 0 0.01. Optional, you can adjust my exponential distribution. This reduces the my scattering effect at a certain altitude by 40%. So I'm going to turn it down to 1. And some of these tweaks are very subtle, but they do add little by little to the overall feel and look of the overcast lighting. Next, you can adjust atmosphere absorption. This will contribute absorption of the atmosphere for the entire scene. So to see exactly what it does, increase the absorption scale, and then begin to change the color. And just like for Rayleigh scattering, the color that's being absorbed, the color selected, is the color that's being removed from the atmosphere. And the color that's added is opposite on the color wheel. So in this case, for this overcast lighting scene, I'm going to absorb yellow, thus adding more blue. And then I'm going to decrease the absorption scale so it's more subtle and not as strong. So we got a bit more of the blue color that's a bit desaturated. Then after we've controlled some of the properties further, you may want to go back to the skylight and adjust the intensity. And make sure you jump into the map, run around, see everything in motion. 
and I can see the shadows. So I want to scatter the light a bit more so that shadow is more diffused. So I got to go back to the sky atmosphere and I'm going to increase my scattering scale. Also, if you go under the atmosphere, you have two properties you may want to tweak and control. And I often do. First is atmosphere height. You may want to increase it to decrease it and see its effect. In my case, I'm going to leave it at default. And then you may want to adjust and increase or decrease multi-scattering. Then go back into the map and test again. So at this point, I often go back, changing the skylight intensity, and then going back to my scattering scale, then maybe to atmosphere height, back to multi-scattering, and just go through all the properties that I already gone through and readjust, change, and just see what it does to the scene. At this point, we already have our overcast lighting and I'm just fine tuning and tweaking the properties further. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this and uh, we've achieved our overcast day, overcast lighting. But the one thing that you may want to have is visibility of the clouds. Right now, the my scattering effect is so strong that it creates a haze which blocks the visibility of the sky and the clouds. So you may want to see the clouds in the sky while having an overcast lighting day. So let me show you how. Select the sky atmosphere and scroll down to art direction. And then here you want to lower aerial perspective view distance scale. Default is one. And if you set it to zero, you will remove the haze and you'll get to see the clouds while still having overcast lighting. Doing this does change your lighting. So you see it got a little bit darker and the scattering of the light changes. So you may not want to turn down to zero maybe leave a little bit of haze around. So I'm going to change it to 0 0.01. Very, very slight aerial perspective view distance scale. And then because of this, you may want to go back through and adjust a few other properties, either in the sky atmosphere, maybe in the skylight. But I'm pretty happy with how this looks. And now, since you can see the clouds, you may want to go to volumetric cloud actor and adjust the four properties there on the layer. You'll often have to adjust trace and start max distance to remove that far away distance tracing effect where the clouds meet the horizon. So I often have to lower it from the default value of 350. And also jump into the material instance of your clouds and adjust the parameters there to make the clouds look better. And if you want to learn how to create your own volumetric cloud material, I have a tutorial on that and I will link it in the blog post and in the description of the video. Now I'm going to show you how to add exponential height fog so you can have additional fog effect in your level. The exponential height fog is not required because sky atmosphere does have capability of rendering its own fog, but I do like to use it because it gives me a little better control over having fog in the level. But there's a few things you need to do in order to make it work properly. So let's go to place actors, visual effects, and insert exponential height fog. In the properties, first you need to change fog in scattering color to black and directional in scattering color also to black. It will remove the fog color while still adding fog and taking the sky atmosphere color into effect. Now also, this is very important that if you are using exponential height fog with sky atmosphere, you have to enable it to be used with sky atmosphere. Go to edit project settings and then search for height fog. And you need to enable this support sky atmosphere affecting height fog. I already have mine enabled, but if you don't, make sure you have it enabled and it will tell you to restart the editor. All right, at this stage, you would go through the exponential height fog details panels and change settings for how you want this fog to look. Adjust fog density, fog max opacity, start distance of the fog, fog height fall off, and of course, spawn into the map as often as you can to really see what it looks like in motion and from player's point of view. And for the last part of this tutorial, we're going to adjust post-process volume and post-process volume should always be adjusted at the very end 
when you've finished with lighting, with sky atmosphere, the fog, the clouds, and the scene is 80% there. And what we're focused on for post-process volume is color grading. This will allow you to change the color of the scene, make it more saturated or desaturated, add contrast, add certain colors to highlights, midtones, or shadows. So it gives you the ability to change the overall visual look of the scene. And for overcast lighting, you may want to go through and make it a little bit cooler, add a bit of blue or cyan, and just tweak the overall visual aspect of your scene. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and now you know how to do overcast lighting with Sky Atmosphere. And if you want to learn more about how to use Unreal Engine 4 as a complete beginner, so you can begin to create your own environments, I have a tutorial course, UE4 Fundamentals Volume 1, the essential beginner's guide to getting started with UE4. And then I also have the second volume that will teach you everything you need to know to begin creating landscapes in Unreal Engine 4. You can download both of these courses on worldoflevelddesign.com store.